what God Jesus Christ tells us. While I was building, you were tearing down. And he gives us the example of the church of Sardis in Revelation 3. The church is in Asia Minor. The church in Sardis to the angel of the church in Sardis, right? They were, there are angels that are in charge of the churches. They protect the churches as there are for each family, as there are for every person who is, of course, baptized in the Christian church. These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up, strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. That's what the angel is telling the church of Sardis. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. And this is the church, the angel of the church. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me dressed in white, for they are worthy. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the names of that person from the book of life, but will acknowledge that name before my Father and his angels. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And then this is what our Lord tells us. Evangelize with love for love. Be rooted in me, my child. Hand over everything to me and allow me to be your spiritual director, directing you and giving you directives for the unification of my churches. Remember, the Christian church used to be one, and now it's in thousands of pieces. This is not what Christ wants, obviously. Directing you to give and giving you the directives for the unification of my churches, you are to be a sign for them, and they will learn that since I am one, you too will be one as we are one. Scriptures will be fulfilled because my scatterdotal prayer to the Father will be accomplished. I am in you, so do not fear. Remember, this is the prayer that he gave to uh, our Father, that we will all be united with him as he's united with the Father. Your mission, little one, is to bring my people under one name, my name, and break bread together. There's no need to worry. Do your best and I will do the rest. I need humility to accomplish my works in you and thus bring everything on the surface. Your faithless generation that shed so much blood from me will rebuff you. But my child, I shall hold you on your feet in spite of the impressive wounds you will receive from this evil generation. Help will be given to you from above. I have preached to you and to others. Do not stop there. Forward the teachings I have given you both in public and in your homes, that is to our families as well. I know how frail you are, but I also know what I have chosen. So speak up, my child. Yet the day will come when they will break bread together on one altar and no one will stop my children coming to me. No one will ask them, what are you? What kind of Christian are you? This fortress shall have, they have built to divide you is already condemned by me. You are all brothers in me. This is what you are to teach them to believe and persuade them to do. As for those who remain divided in body and spirit, differentiating themselves under my holy name, I tell them, as I have told the church in Sardis, you are reputed to be alive in the eyes of the world, but not in your maker's eyes. Revive what little you have left. It's dying fast, and whenever the corp wherever the corpse is, there will the vultures gather. Unite, assemble, invoke my name together. Consecrate my body and my blood together. Do not pers persecute the way. Humble yourselves and bend to be able to unite and glorify me. You speak of the spirit, but do not act in the spirit. You speak on of the way, but you rank first to obstruct it. How little do you know me? You call out my name, yet you murder my children between the sanctuary and the altar. 
I tell you, meaning that you keep them from me, right? You tell them doctrines that are not mine. In other words, that's what he means. They're killing their faith. I tell you solemnly, all of this will be brought to you in the day of judgment. Can you face me and truly say, I am reconciled with my brother? Can you truly say, I have not differentiated myself among brothers under your holy name? I have treated them as my equal. When you present your case before me, I shall then say to your face, Away with you, you have not treated your brothers as your equal. You have massacred daily my body. Where is your triumph? While I was building, you were tearing down. While I was reassembling, you were scattering. While I was uniting, you were dividing. Yet even today, if you come to me as you are, I can heal you, I can transfigure you, and you will glorify me. Alas, for those with child or with babies in their breast, when my day comes, write, Alas, for those I find with sin coiled in them, as with child and with adepts formed by them, and of their own kind. In other words, uh, he says that in the Old Testament as well, that uh, those pregnant, meaning pregnant with sin, as coiled in their bodies and hiding. Okay? So, uh, God sees what we have done, and we can't hide it from him, even though others believe they can. Okay? As for alas, I find with sin coiled inside them, as with child and with adepts formed by them, and of their own kind, but it has been said that from your own ranks there will be men coming forward with the travesty of the truth on their lips to induce the disciples to follow them. Acts 20 to 30, 20, 30. I am shouting and I am trying to break through your defenses, your, deaf, your deafness to save you. And if I reproach you, it is because of the greatness of the love I have for you. But I told you truly, I shall assemble one day all the separated parts of my body together into one assembly. Do not weep, my friend, you who love me, endure what I endure. However, console me and have faith in me. You will achieve great works in my name. Be tolerant as I am tolerant. And ha I had been hungry, thirsty, and often starving, and you came to my help. Carry on your good works, and I shall reward you. I tell you truly, you are not alone. I am with you always. Be united in me and live in peace. You are the prosperity of my blood and the heir of my kingdom. Tell them that the heart of the Lord is love and that the heart of the law is based on love. Tell my people that I do not want administrators in my house. They will not be justified in my day because it is these very ones who have industrialized my house. I have sent you my spirit to live in your hearts, and this is why the spirit that lives in you will show you that my church will be rebuilt inside your hearts, and you will acknowledge each other as your brother in your heart. Will I, brother, one more season go through the pain I have been going through year after year, or will you give rest me rest this time? Am I going to drink one more season the cup of your division? Or will you rest my body and unify for my sake the feast of Easter? Easter used to always be after the uh, Hebrew uh, Pesach, Passover. And what happened is, after the schism of the Christian and Orthodox churches, the East and West, the Catholic and the Protestant churches even have Easter before Pesach. That is not to be done, according to what our Lord Jesus Christ was uh, directing his disciples and apostles during the 40 days between his crucifixion and uh, his resurrection and uh, assumption. He was telling them how the church was to be run in the um, uh, writings of the uh, apostolic, uh, the apostolic uh, directives. Now, the uh, Daschalia. In unifying the date of Easter, you will alleviate my pain, brother, and you will rejoice in me, and I in you, and I will have the sight of many restored. My beloved, my creature, he who is my husband has revealed to us things that no human ha ha hand could have performed. This is what you will cry out. Once your sight is restored in my name, and I will come to you. 
I solemnly tell you, summon, assemble all of you, and listen this time to your shepherd. I will lead you in the way that you must go. Send my message to the ends of the earth. Courage, my child, smile when I smile. I am with you to guide your steps to heaven. Now meaning here when he says, uh, Beloved, my creator, he who is my husband, because our Lord Jesus Christ is the bridegroom, and the church, that is all of us members that make up the church, are his bride. And this is a prayer, that Jesus' Jesus's prayer to the Father for all of us, for all believers, on John 17, 20. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Now every time we pray, as we're doing now, we speak to our Lord Jesus Christ, and every time we open the Holy Bible, His Word speaks to us. So I just opened up the Holy Bible at random, as our church teaches us today to do, so that He can give us His message concerning what we're talking about here. And we opened up in the Old Testament the prophet Zechariah, uh, chapter 9, 9, the coming king. Rejoice! Greatly, O daughter of Zion, proclaim it aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Daughter means here, you know, us, we are part of the church. He is the bridegroom, we are the bride. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or a child or whatever, you are the, the uh, daughter of uh, Zion. O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, your king comes to you. He is righteous and saving. He is gentle and mounted upon a donkey, even a young foal. He will utterly destroy the chariots of Ephraim and the horse out of Jerusalem. The bow, the, bow, the bow of war shall be utterly destroyed, and there shall be abundance and peace among the nations. He shall rule over the waters as far as the sea and over the rivers to the ends of the earth. And by the blood of your covenant, you freed, you freed your prisoners from a pit having no water. Your pri you prison... You prisoners from the congregation, you shall live in the forest, and for one day of your exile I will repay you to double. For I have bent you, O Judah, for myself as a bow. I have filled Ephraim, and I will arouse your sons. O Zion, against the sons of the Greeks, the Greeks were pagans, remember, over the sons of the Greeks, and I will hand you as a sword of a warrior. And the Lord will be, oh, the sword is, the, 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 is a symbol for the word of God. Uh, and the Lord will be over them, and he shall go forth like a lightning bolt. The, the Lord Almighty shall sound with the trumpet, and shall go forth with the tumult of his threat. The Lord Almighty will shield them, and they shall devour their enemy and overwhelm them with sling stones. They will drink them down as wine, and they shall fill the bowls as at the altar. And on that day the Lord their God will deliver them, his people as a flock for sacred stones will roll across his land. For if anything of his be good and anything of his be fair, there shall be grain for the young men and the fragrant wine for the virgins. And this is uh, on uh, John seventeen twenty, and uh, from True Life in God, October 14, 1991. And may God give you boldness and fortitude of faith and make you living saints for him so that you can finish your apostleship. God bless you. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.